Hi all, welcome to another Chess 24 Banter Blitz. It's approaching 11.30 a.m. UK time. Uh, let's first have a look at the discount code screen. You can get a whopping 15% off if you use the voucher code Kings Crusher. So an amazing discount there. You can get to play the likes of Magnus Carlsen, the current world chess champion, and other amazing grandmasters, IMs, and even bunnies like me. <laughs> if, you, if you really want to crush someone, okay. So a, a wide variety of streamers to choose from. So let's see. Uh, let's go on to the uh, challenge screen and take up the first challenge today. All disto. I hope all and visual is okay. So, okay. Hmm. So morning, all this though. I hope uh, all this though is ready. Yes. Okay. I'll go with knight c6. I think. Uh, Dangerous opponent, really. Bishop c4. That's interesting, isn't it? I think he usually plays an English opening. Okay, there was that gambit we've just bypassed. Knight g5, d5, knight f5, that gambit. So this is Joko piano territory. I think I will play a6 and bishop e6 challenge that bishop and drop this one back in light of d4 potential now maybe d5 here is possible i know both sides the delaying casting that's interesting in its own right. Now d4 might positionally do something against this bishop. I'm hoping I get a bit of space advantage here with d4 and try and clamp down this bishop on c2. I, I know he's probably aware I might throw in g5 if he just routinely castled. But here I, I think this might be a reasonable position. Try and clamp down on the use of f5 and try and just maintain a kind of edge in terms of the light square bishops. I hope my light square bishop is uh, reasonably dangerous. If I castled here c4, if I played dc, bishop c3, he's on that e5. Maybe the lesser evil move is just to castle queenside. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So we're in kind of exotic territory, I, I believe now, uh, where, okay, am I going to be in trouble later with my king there? I hope not. Uh, a5, bishop c5, he's going to play like b4 pretty soon. Um, maybe, maybe I should try and clamp down on b4 mind you a3 I, I think I might be doing this all wrong because a3 and b4 is going to be strong anyway yeah I, I think I was more worried about okay knight e5 is also a concern yes there's numerous concerns already picking up here mm, b5 for knight b4 is interesting. I think I'll go with this. Knight e5 after. Yes, this is rather doubtful. I'm going to say there is knight e5 at the very least. I think I'm making. Uh, unfortunately, I'm making up this opening as I go along. It's not particularly good improvisation at the moment. Okay, so bishop d6 might be a move. Uh, 
A3, AB, I don't know. Maybe that might be let off because I'm holding E5 now. Some sort of let, let off. If he takes Queen A4, we're in completely weird territory at the moment. But my king, I don't like my king that much on the queen side here now. Um, yeah, A3, AB, I, I suspect might be plausible. All right, there is knight a2 or knight a6. Maybe knight a6 is plausible. I'm hoping the worst is over for the moment. <clears throat> the knight actually holds usefully c7. So if I can get to play rook c8 and c5, I might be retrospectively <laughs> legitimizing this play, which otherwise seems very, very doubtful just a moment ago. Uh, very, very doubtful. Okay, C5 might actually be useful here. Um, yes, I don't think this opening is repeatable, but uh, whatever happened, whatever has happened here, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, I could be being biased, it doesn't look that bad to me to get a tempo here and play knight c5. Um, would be threatening knight d3 on queen b2. Bishop a3 threatens like rook c1 on oh, his knight e5. Okay, um, that knight e5, yeah, it is kind of dangerous. Is it possible? Uh, I need to still be very, very careful. Okay, king here. Trying to be careful, trying to unpin. Can I take the C file? At least playing for rook C1 doesn't seem immediate. Right, okay. Um. Knight d7. Yeah, so I'm not convinced. Uh, he could go queen b3. Is there knight c5 after? Okay. If I play bishop takes here, giving him some knight square play. Okay, that looks nasty. <clears throat> um yeah that looks I don't know plausible knight a4 is knight a4 plausible I'll get some stuff off Knight B six to A four. Now Knight D six, Rook D seven. All right, so all this. Okay. Um, Knight C three. Trying to simplify. Can I get rid of the knight on e4? There's no queen a8 at the moment. All right, this looks a little bit safer in some respects if I can get to play c2. 
for sure. Or maybe that was Queen C3. Okay, um, this ending scenario. Uh, is it that bad if I took? That's probably quite bad. My rook seems a bit weird. Oh, that's weird. All right, I yeah, I think <laughs> I think that's really I I I just don't believe what I play is is possible. It's, this is just not this is fictional. This this must be um there must be something for white going on here. Um Knight takes e5. Yeah, I thought this is uh this is gonna be dodgy. Okay, knight c4. Yeah, it looks it looks well dodgy. Okay, I have to say that. It looks well dodgy. I don't think I want to repeat that actually anytime soon. <laughs> No, uh, it's not to be repeated that opening anytime soon. Okay, well played. Super bo Bohemio. <clears throat> um, so E5. Okay. I'm thinking this is the more respectable gambit rather than f6. The more respectable way of trying to get a gambit from this position. Uh, because then I can try and castle queenside. I think f6 often weakens fatally uh, too much on, on the diagonal. At least in my bullet testing of this system. But this with the the rook kind of X-ring the queen, I think has got some interesting compensation going for it on this time control. Um, I'll start looking at some forcing moves. Oh, H two h2 there's also bishop g3 on route uh, to stop the castle uh, the king castling so i think rook h2 is going to be dangerous here and then possibly knight h5 for knight g3 if, if uh... oh there's knight d4 here okay queen e3 or queen d2 same knight d4 queen e3 I just want to check out a forcing move or two, uh, or not. I think I just throw in knight d4 here anyway. Okay, uh, then take on h2. Take on h2. Um, with the rook. Maybe with the rook. Take with the rock, maybe. Now on the G three is knight f three. If he castles queen side, uh, oh, hell, that is tricky. That bishop doesn't seem that happy. Uh, I can give the bishop a reverse. Yeah. Uh, to come back over here. Okay. 
Okay, so e5 is going to be on the cards soon. Can I? Okay, can I sort out this bishop for a moment? I don't like having loose pieces in the possession there. Okay, so queen e6 is queen e6 plausible? There's a forcing move tactic I've noticed. Uh, Bishop f4 for 92. In, in certain situations, I was just quickly checking that out. Rook d6 here to anywhere to unpin. What about just to unpin? Don't like being in pins, virtual pins or absolute pins, whatever. Pins are pretty restrictive. So trying to. Relieve the freedom of the pieces. Okay, so here, yeah, okay, rook. What about knight takes d5 here? Is this thing going on after c3 coming up? Alright, c3. Any check, I play queen takes f5. Maybe I can get away with this. C3, knight C6. Okay, don't like the pressure. Queen C4. No, I need to be. I need to be protecting E6. I think. Yeah, I think I need E6 being protected. Once he takes on D4, that's dangerous. I wonder if maybe safer is rook d8. Oh, there's queen c3. Then I'd be losing a piece. Yes, I, I think rook d8, queen c3. So probably this is scary. I wonder if bishop c7 for rook d8 here. Maybe. Maybe. There's queen g7. Okay, bishop e5, queen e5. No, bishop e5, there's um, queen a7. f6, there's bishop g6. It's not very good news. f5 with tempo might be interesting. Bishop d5, queen e5. Maybe that's the most interesting right now. Maybe. Yes. Uh, so I need that tempo. Queen b6 on bishop d5. In fact, okay, there's rook d8 as well for a back row. No, it's check. So bishop d5, queen b6. Hmm. Bishop d5, queen b6. Is that plausible? Queen e7. Maybe I should get my king off the light squares with king b8. Alright, here. Okay, rook d8 seems plausible. Or bishop. Okay, protect this guy. Better, probably. Let's protect a7. Bishop c4, queen e5, bishop c4, queen e5, or rook, rook d8 here, or rook c8, rook d8. Queen d6, see this is rather tricky scenarios. Um, get my king uh, on the pin on the dark square away from the bishop. 
Maybe a bishop b6, bit of comfort. Bishop b6 and rook d7 if needed. Bishop b6. Okay, rook d7 to hold. Um, g7. Bishop b6 does kind of give some options. Maybe I can try and go for the king here with queen b6 if he's not careful. Okay, I need to be careful though. Maybe a battery against b2. Okay, something better than that then. Oh, I'll be running into big trouble soon. Hold on. Okay, I, I think I was in big trouble. I think it's at least a draw. I can't go to uh, C5 because of, uh, I think, I can't do this because of this. That's not, that's not clever. Oh, maybe, maybe it was possible. Okay, we'll, we'll play. Yeah. Yeah, my king didn't feel that safe. <laughs> Kramnik students. Okay. Right, so there's this Bishop B4 shape line. Going back here. Bit novel rather than Bishop C5. This looks as though um, I might have pressure later on the center. Um, where does the bishop want to go? If it goes to b3, maybe bishop g4 later. Is Bishop G four? Um, give Bishop G four a chance. Try and provoke some weaknesses on the diagonal. And um, kick this guy. Okay, so. Give give the queen some options. Queen c seven and rook eighty eight. I queen c seven here. <laughs> um, no knight f five can be a pain. Okay. Do I already need? Some, I've already got some problems here. Ah. <laughs> uh, Okay, he could definitely take and then double my pawns. Unless I play queen e7, that runs into f4. Um, let's see, I mean, knight e7, rook e7, bishop f6 looks pretty unpleasant. Queen e7, f4 looks unpleasant as well. As far as I can tell, um, maybe there's a G file there to play with. Um, that could be optimistic. Okay, G five here anyway. K 
King G7 and Knight H5 strike me as moves. Or B5 Heather's Knight D6. Okay. Rook D8. Rook D7, Knight F D7. Or just taking. Oh, okay. This is uh doesn't look that solid now. Knight E8. Knight E8. No, this doesn't look that solid. I'm looking at knight d6. I don't think he's winning a pawn with knight d6 just yet. Alright, let's uh, get the king off this diagonal. Maybe f6, bishop, f7, actually. Try and get a pin there. f6, bishop, f7. Seems a way to go here. F6 and bishop f7. And this is anything. I think that's reasonable. This bishop isn't doing anything at the moment. So I, I believe that's a plan. F6 and bishop f7. I don't know about a5 if that's doing anything that dangerous just yet. Knight takes. Oh, blimey. Oh, blimey. <laughs> oh, blimey. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Ah. Uh. Let's hang here. So I, I lose a pawn there. If I played Queen B6, will I have compensation for the pawn? Like, attack on the A pawn. <laughs> not much compensation. Ah, oh, uh, not much. Not much. Okay. Knight F6. Rook D6, B5, CB. I mean, AB, Rook A1. This Rook A1 idea, we're trying to get something over here with G4. There's a combination of B5 and Rook A1. If I can get a form pawn over here with Rook A1 coming over there. I don't think rook d6 is that dangerous. This might be logical here to play this, try and break the pawn chain. Try and get a form pawn, and then b5, rook a2 could be dangerous. Or knight h5 to f4. Our rook d6 is dangerous for e5. But again, if I get knight h5 to f4 with b5 in, if I get a knight there and rook on over there, I think that's a reasonable thing. <clears throat> Let's get blasted in the meantime. If I play b5 here, like f4, has he got nasty discovered checks? Let's find out. Alright, so the idea of well, G3 is also just that rook a1 threat. And knight f4. So he's giving me a bit of counterplay here. Isn't he? Knight f4, rook takes f4. Knight f4, rook takes f4. Got the form pawn with rook a1. Could I win G2? Well, that's a nasty pen, isn't it? For knight E2 now. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it gave me a bit of counterplay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. the Fawnborns are dangerous. <laughs> That's why these are dangerous. Fawnborns are pretty dangerous, yeah. On the chessboard near, near the king. They're worth pieces. They're worth, like, attacking pieces, so... Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, always blame the mouse. Uh, I think it's if you look at a lot of Kasparov games in the King's Engine there is a latent quite often Kasparov is playing moves like in the King's Engine King G7, H5, H4 he's, he's trying to establish some sort of fawny pawn even in Kasparov games pre Leela. I think the idea of just trying to get a pawn near the king even if you're pawned out, it's, it's quite dangerous. Like a goal hanging pawn, if it was football, it would be like a goal hanging player. Uh, uh, okay. So, um,. H4 here or E5. E5 looks as though. Um, I, mm, okay, I I, I want to. I need to test if, uh, if if this is any good. I think D takes knight takes gives me C3 on on knight F5 C3, and it's not as horrific as it might seem. Uh, I would I would expect. Knight G5 here is also I don't know. Um, Okay, bishop d2 for a moment. If I want to try and castle queenside. All right, that bishop's going away from e6, isn't it? Is it not? So maybe, maybe queen e2 is a plausible move here. Uh, with the idea that if bishop b7 going away from e6, knight g5, there's no f6 because of knight e6. So knight g5 later might be interesting. Uh, here, in fact, if I castle queenside, let's put the knight back there. He has, he has opened up that diagonal. So unless I'm getting chat mated soon, I would go for knight g5 and knight b4 support. Maybe I can take and then bishop b3 on knight b4. It's an interesting resource there to check out. But I would imagine um, on bishop b3, it's not immediate. I'm not immediately getting checkmated. If I'm not immediately getting checkmated, I'm playing for g4 here. Now, I'm very happily playing for g4, I think. So there's no f6 has been ruled out. Uh, so g4, trying to open up the lines. Okay, this looks very, very pleasant. This opposite side castling. Looks like I'm undermining that. Pawn chain quite heavily. Okay, six looks very tempting. Double rooks. Queen h5 looks very, very tempting. It's a treble on the h file. If I'm travelling on the H file here, there's no time, I think, for knight f4, there's a rook h7. This looks remarkably dangerous, doesn't it, for black? Um, I'd say it looks pretty dangerous. 
I can run it with checks. After knight f4, rook h7 check. Um, the queen sack is also probably interesting. Rook takes, knight takes. No, it's not. I think I have to run it with checks. Yes, I'll run it with checks. Rook f1 here, knight e2 check, king d1. I'll be threatening mate there. e5, there's queen f7 mate. So in other words, it seems as though rook f1 is dangerous. Any other forcing moves, queen h8, knight g8, I don't know if that does anything. Rook f1 seems tempting. Ninety two king d one. Let's check this out again. I, th I think that's tempting. I'm, I'm going to go with this. Right. Now, e five. Does that do anything? Okay, my piece is not that good actually. <clears throat> Bishop f4 and g6 though, hold on. There's bishop f4 and g6 is dangerous. But g7, g8. Yes, that looks like a move which is dangerous. g6. Friends thing, chatmate. Knight g6. Queen g6. King e7, queen f7. Uh, so knight e2, king d1. This looks rather dangerous again, all of a sudden. I might have a point about f7 here. Okay, there is actually there's bishop e6 here. That's an interesting resource. Bishop e6. That knight is now officially pinned. Queen F7, I think, just picks up the knight, actually. So, I think that's uh, good news, yeah. Okay, thanks. Where's my mouse? Yeah, I think that was getting a bit dangerous. Now, Kaz. <laughs> I'm terrified of Kaz. <laughs> Kaz has been training against me secretly for the last few months. <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for that day of humiliating me. <laughs> I hope it's not today. He's playing at at least 2200, 2300. <laughs> Honest. In my view, at least 2200, 2300. <laughs> but okay, okay. I'll, I'll take it. I'll try and take it on the abuse I get on YouTube after. Okay. For, for nearly losing every single game to Kaz in the last few months. All right, here we go again. <laughs> okay, so Kaz is solid. And so I want to find an effective plan here. I'm taking him, I am taking him very, very, very seriously. I need to find an effective plan here. Bishop d3, g4, g5. Is, is, is that, is that too reckless? I'm going to get mashed up after. Bishop g5 instead. Is that more prudent? Bishop b3. Okay, I'll try and create some weaknesses. <laughs> Bishop D3. Rook, Rook D E1 94. I don't know. Is that any good? Rook D E1 94. Maybe, maybe it's good. I'm doubting myself. Rook D E1. Uh, Rook F E1 might be better. I don't know. E5. 
And he's quick. He's quick with it. Okay. Putting him under time pressure as well now. Knight C E four is doing nothing after Bishop E seven, is it? Uh, it's doing virtually nothing. Okay, the, I could go to G three maybe. Uh, maybe Knight G three. I don't know. I I don't think. <clears throat> actually, actually, hold on a sec. Mm, if it wasn't for Queen B six, Bishop F four would be tempting. I think I need to um, hold back for a moment somehow. Unless Bishop F four, Queen B six, Knight D six is is any good. I really doubt it. <laughs> I'm gonna play Knight G three. Knight G three. Yes, Knight G three. Okay, drop this guy back. Yes, I'm going to drop this guy back. A3 and C4. Oh, some weaknesses. Okay, can I play for C4 and Bishop C3? Is C5, Bishop C3 for D5 maybe? D five looks tempting. E five. No, I'm not really sure. Is B four just to stop C five for a moment? D five E five. I'm not sure of. It's a committal pull move. I don't necessarily. Uh, want to play. However, hang on. Now that B4 has been played, C5 is possible. Maybe this is the way to go. So E5, C5. Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. Yeah, maybe. Oh, okay. So I'll take it here in that case. Okay. If I played rook b1, is that plausible? Rook b1? Right, and bishop a1 and knight h5 for knight f6. If takes queen h5, okay, thanks, Kaz. Yeah, no, 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 okay, not so much resistance this week, but <laughs> he's definitely been winning a lot of the positions on the board in the last few weeks. It's it's not my imagination, I'm sure it's not my imagination. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, Dan Jelin. Mm. <sighs> okay, I'm relieved. I'm relieved, really. Um, okay, so uh, knight c3, knight f3, uh, bishop e3 is, is the classic pawn duo. Uh, but does it really do anything after bishop g4? Is is that really enough for any, for any advantage? I mean, it might be. I mean... Uh, what about just f4, knight f3, e5? So sort of Austrian attack with the c pawns exchanged off. Would that make it? Maybe it makes a huge difference to the h file attack. I like. We'll see. Moving that knight away from h5 makes uh, makes h4, h5 more dangerous. Okay, so knight g5 and 
Ones. Um, dare I say it? G4 is almost, or Bishop H5. Now, uh, that Bishop H5. F6, there's Queen B3 check. I think that would be dangerous to play F6. Queen B3 check. And uh, King H8, Knight F7 is winning the exchange. Uh, so, but in the meantime, I might be threatening Bishop takes H5 here. Knight C6, Bishop E3, there possibly is Knight D5. Knight D5, okay. But here, I would imagine Bishop H5 is dangerous. I think I'm going to go with that. Sometimes crude is effective, depending on the position. All oh, right, okay. I didn't know it was that effective. Maybe maybe try moving the rook. I don't know if if moving the rook. Um, all right. Well, I can probably use this f file soon. Something. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's pretty dangerous. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the game, Cobra. Hmm. Cobra, I'm going to play. Um, <laughs> I, I've done some Jabava videos recently. Okay, I'm going to go all out with the Jabava London system. So knight c3. This has got some stings to it, like knight b5 as an idea. So sometimes a6 is played or c6. So this is a bit like. So Magnus Carlsen used this to beat someone over 2800 recently here on Chess 24. Uh, which I'd covered as well, fascinating game. And he calls it the Italian game on the other side of the board. So in the Italian game, you have bishop c4, c3, d3, and playing for b4. It's a bit like that on the other side of the board, if I can arrange it like that, that is, with f3, knight g e2, g4. Uh, so there's, an, there's a couple of ideas at least of playing for e4 or g4. After f3, knight g e2. I don't know if this, this is maybe it feels a bit weakening because of knight h5 concretely, but maybe uh, bishop g5 uh, is coming up. Is it possible I could try and castle queenside or suppress knight h5 with g4? In fact, if he castles g4, but then I imagine, uh, I, I would imagine e5 is coming up. Um, the e5 is probably the one to be concerned about. So queen d2, castling queen side, is that terrible or just castling king side? Castling and then e4 on the king side. Okay. It feels like Kobe is improvising the opening a little bit here. Yeah, I'm not convinced about this because I my bishop can go there, right? Which means if e5 that weakens f5 so g4 and knight g3 later and in fact d4 is more solid now playing for g4 and knight g3 seems like an attractive uh proposition if if uh e5 g4 knight f6 knight g3 i i'm going to go for that i'm going to go for that e5 knight f5 with tempo on the bishop does my queen belong on d2 or e2 i think actually a4 here is also interesting if i play a4 i'm probably committing to castling kingside e4 for e5 what's wrong with e4 for e5 out of interest is not that quick e5 is a problem Quick e5 might be a problem. 
ED, okay. H4, okay, there's a lot of ideas. There's, there's too many ideas to think about. Queen, uh, I, I don't know where to start actually. Castling, Queen E2, Queen D2, E4, A4, H4. Apart from that, yeah. Uh, what would I really, what would I really want to do here? E5 is like, I would say, Black's main strategic pawn break. On that event, there is maybe Bishop F5. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I play this waiting move. E, E5 is not necessarily... Okay, okay. Now that that's played, I, I believe E4 here, it's a safer bet that E5 is not played with the king's in the centre. If I can get to play E5, then there's perks to that, like knight H5. This might be a reasonable position. This seems like a reasonable position now. In fact, could I not go for an attack? And castle queenside, that would seem uh, my cup of tea. Just the castle queen side here now. Um, that's leaving that. Um, pawn on e5. It would seem here that knight h5 should be interesting all right i don't really want to be distracted with that knight but if i don't take it there's b5 after if i take it rook f3 there's queen e6 there uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna take the bait then okay let's drop back for a moment I think right, if I took here, yeah, made way for my king. Try and weaken those dark squares. Yeah, so bishop b5, yeah. Um, it's a um, queen sack there. Rook h6, rook h1, bishop e2, rook h7 is mating because of that pawn, is it not? No. Let's play a sensible move for a moment. <clears throat> and another one for Bishop G5. Yes, Bishop G5 looks remarkably tempting. There's always Queen F6. It does look remarkably tempting to do this. Uh, is it possible I'm wrong here? It's possible. I would at least get two pawns, three pawns, three pawns minimum. Probably getting material back after Queen F6. 
Yeah, no, it looks crushing after Queen F6. Oh, uh, yeah, this this looks as though the rook's dropping. Yeah, it, it looks pretty pretty bad. Okay, that was interesting. Jabava system. Um, yeah. Okay, Atlantic Gambit. Okay. Uh, I found one of the practical difficulties. <laughs> I found trying to study this Marvel system. So there is this uh, great course at Chessable for it at the moment with a free video if you want to check it out by Simon Williams. But one of the things I really found is you can't really easily um, look it up because it's an, an amalgamated um, ECO code. If you look up, was it, I don't know, D00 or something? There's loads of others. Is it Dean or not? I don't know. But there's loads of other openings. So the easiest way to research it as a surprise weapon seems to me right now to um, go to a site and look up Jabava and see how he plays with the white pieces because uh, he's one of the major exponents. And also this course that's, that's available at Chessable. Uh, but as a surprise weapon... Um, I, I found it interesting the idea that um uh in principle we take for granted d four and c four is taken for granted generally uh so the idea of d four and knight c three okay it's you could say that's just reverse shakurin i guess but the shakurin with black hasn't had a fantastic reputation at high levels i mean it's not not fantastic they use at high levels except maybe I don't know faster time controls but so anyway d4 knight c3 is a surprise weapon very interesting I also like knight c3 sometimes and then if d5 e4 but because of this overloaded ECO code issue it's if if you, for example, the Rogozin is a lot easier to find out about. Uh, you can just put in Rogozin and go to various opening databases. You can find out Rogozin. It's got its own ECO code. It's not sharing an ECO code. And major exponent there is like, oh, you fan. So to to find out about the Rogozin system, I think is actually much simpler than to find out about Jabava system. If you wanted to get uh, model games, so anyway, knight f5. What what's going on here? So knight f5 um, looks dangerous because of bishop d4 and queen h4 with knight g3 mating. Um, so is this going to be allowed or? This looks pretty dangerous. Knight G3, mate France. That does parry it, it seems. Okay. Adequately. Okay, so in fact there's Bishop C3 happening, so maybe I'm, I'm overestimating. Bishop C3 looks fine. Um, I mean, kicked off this diagonal. This could be rather dangerous. What about Bishop E3? Hang on a sec. Bishop E3. Right. And if I protected that, I'd end up losing the rook or something. To Queen. Okay. Hmm. Um, I I think oh no I don't I don't know. Bishop c eight looks rather miserable. Okay, Bishop c eight is <laughs> uh Bishop c eight is I don't want to lose an a pawn. Uh, my I don't like this glare on the rook. I think King g seven and uh, to protect the rook.
um, King G7. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This bishop d4 is pretty nasty. So maybe I should just take that off. I'll just take it off and protect the rook before something horrible happens. I mean, something horrible might still happen, but at least I'm trying to minimize horribleness. Queen d6. Trying to get the queens off. Still the e5 square. Okay. Bishop a6. That's plausible. Knight b4 is, is nasty. Bishop d7 might be more plausible. There is actually uh knight b4 for knight d5. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, that's cool. Okay. Oh boy. <clears throat> okay, d4 it is then. Offering a pawn. And Take a second, Rook C8 after. Oh, I don't know. That's not very good, but I haven't got that many great alternatives. So I've got nothing here, basically. Uh, um, let's try and hit pawn potentially. I got any plan at all any plan at all if I take here I'm, I'm okay I'm making his pawns better um mm, it's not good okay okay and I don't want to run out of time either so is there a plan is there a plan all right there's king e6 at least uh, uh, that's giving me a bit of optimism. Um, hang on, let's play this check and get behind the pawn. I think I need to get behind the pawn. There's d5 push if needed. If the rook moves, there's always d5, right? Yes, I, I suspect it's a draw, yeah. All played. All played. Okay, solid, very solid. 
I, I, I didn't really see. Yeah, I'm getting excited about Queen H4, but no, it fizzled. Fizzled. Okay. Beagle. Check for bishop e7 is a novelty idea rather than bishop c5. I've seen in a game of Magnus Carlsen picked it up. It okay, it does sort of um, the bishop maybe sometimes is a target there on c5. The bishop here is a little bit hemmed in sometimes. Okay, so if I castle and uh, knight g4, well, is white going to play f3? I wonder if um, castling, castling, or h3. Okay, so rook e8, bishop f8 might be sensible. I wouldn't have to worry about okay the use of the c3. It's nice that there's a pawn on c3. So um, bishop f8 and d5. Ed uh, knight d5. There's bishop h7. So queen d5 and there is bishop c4 maybe. I'll still go with that. Um, hitting a2. So bishop c4. Potentially there's knight d4 hitting the queen though. Um, bishop c4, queen. Uh, right. That a2 pawn, can I not just... Take it here. Oh, G five. Okay. Well, let's check. Get the queens off. Or oh, there's knight B one. Oh, maybe, maybe knight B one. Hmm. Yeah. Right. G five is plausible then. So Queen A one, Knight B one, uh, Knight D five, let's say Bishop H seven, King H eight. I would have pressure on E three in that position. It's possible I might be okay there, I believe but uh might be uh Mind. <laughs> uh, although, <laughs> although, uh, okay, this looks. Hang on, I've given White more options here. Well, maybe I'm giving myself more options by not playing the check. Pretty sure there's Queen A one here is uh, interesting, isn't that? Because Knight B one isn't there Knight C three. Uh, because if Queen C three there's Rook E four, and if B C there's Bishop A three. If Queen A one, Queen B one, I could get the Queens off. Okay, I I think this might be interesting here. In this position, knight takes c3. But let's imagine. No, no, no. Bishop a3. There's king d2 anyway. 
Well, how about knight b4 instead? Cb cb for knight a2 check and rook e4. So knight cb4 might actually be a whole much better thing than what I just mentioned. Okay. I'll go with it. I don't know how this is really daft actually. C takes, knight takes. Just, just, just check this again. Queen b3. Well, I don't need to check it. It's going to play it now. So queen b3, knight a2, and rookie. Uh, is my back row weak while this happens? Knight a2 and rookie four. Right, where would the queen go here? Where would the queen go? Okay. All right, so queen h5 is clear and imminent danger. So I guess I have to uh, play rook e4 here. The check, the g6 is dangerous. Um, there's not too many major choices at the moment. Queen h5. King g8, g6, fg, queen g6. I might have time for stuff. Do I? After fg, and there's no queen d5 because of the knight. So fg is plausible, I believe. So here, um, knight. Actually, Queen A2 strikes me as a or Queen A4. Queen A4 looks rather nifty. If the Knight ever moves Queen C2, oh, Queen E4. Okay. Uh, rook E5 stops Knight F5. Uh, right, Rook E5 it is, I think. Yeah, let's do something about. Looks okay. There's no killer check at least immediately, is there? Famous last words. Okay, I don't think there's a killer check. I might actually be playing my own check with rook c5 here anyway. This might actually be good. Um, well here, bishop f5 looks very uh, tempting. Yes. I think I'll go with bishop f5 here. Looks tempting for queen b1. All right, yeah, I was getting, I don't know what the computer is going to make of that. I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, no, not enough time. It's too too much. Okay, der, der Henker, der, too tactical, too tactical. Der Henker, okay. I'm going to play F6 and try and play like a game I've seen recently. Which was caution against someone in a sort of blocking in the bishop strategy. I uh, vaguely I got the inspiration for f6 from this recent game. Um, um, to blunt the bishop. Can I still do that here? Or is there a lot of punishment with d4? Is there a lot of punishment? I hope there isn't. Okay, this is going to go crazy quickly. A 
rook a7 would seem useful. On queen f3. Uh, can I play g6 and sack the exchange? I don't mind losing the exchange here, I think. Because this is just weird, this position. It's just totally weird. Okay. Uh, there is a queen e2 check, and so the white king's inconvenienced. The bishop's blunted. King f7. And there's also a bishop a6 potentially. There's d3. Okay, so king f7 for bishop g7 would seem. King f7 would seem. Okay. Also, d3 doesn't threaten mate or anything. There's a uh, king f7 seems plausible. Now, queen h7, bishop g7. Thankfully, um, how would I get good pieces from here? Bishop f5 threatened. Bishop d3 check. Maybe that's better than bishop a6. D3. Here yeah, it's a better angle than bishop a6. D3. Yeah, no. Bishop d3 looks more effective. Knight c6 looks plausible soon, but bishop g7. The queen. I want the queen to come back out. Well, it looks as though knight c6 is mega dangerous for rook b8 and rook b1, funny enough. Also, this queen looks almost as if it's being trapped. Okay, knight c6. Yeah, I want to play rook b8 for rook b1 potentially. If I play g5 here, I'll actually be threatening bishop g7 to win the queen right now. So that's an immediate issue, isn't it? Well, that seems weird. Bishop g7, knight d5. But what if I took and then bishop g7? That looks like bad news for white. If I just took first. Bishop g7, knight d5. And if I just take. Rookie 1, I'm scooping up a lot of pieces here after just taking rookie 7. There's a ton of pieces being scooped up. There's also bishop g7 anyway. On on rookie one, rookie seven, ninety seven. The the queen is trapped. You know, in short, I think I'm gonna take her and play bishop g seven. The queen sack for knight g five. Oh crikey, that's another way of playing it. Didn't see that, did I? Not so clever now, am I? <laughs> is there king? Is, is there king f8? Uh, knight h7. Oh, crikey! There is knight h7. Can I keep a lid on things with taking in a knight h6? Try and keep a lid on things, and this is anything even worse coming up. Try and stop this um, H pawn blockade as Nimzovich is a fan of blockade. Rookie one, so there's Queen F7 here, which gives me Queen C4. There's also Knight D4 to try and 
suppress that bishop again. This isn't really as glamorous as I hoped for. There is knight d4, bishop d4, queen c4 for queen d4 coming up. Interrupting that protection of c4, knight d4. We'll just get the queens off. Just take and then queen c4. F5 would leave him in a nice position if um, he's not going to do that, is he? If rook g3, f5, I would have fought the positions kind of good. <sighs> Let's quickly check this again. Bishop d4, queen c4 check. King moves queen d4. Let's go with queen e7 after. And then queen e6 might be picking up the rook if I'm not careful. I think it might be safer just to play c takes on queen takes, queen c4. Just recheck this. Bishop d4, queen c4, king moves. Alright, no need to recheck it. f5 then looks as though I'm establishing a nice knight. Okay, this doesn't seem that bad to get the queens off that rather simply. F4 for F3. Okay, he's got a passed pawn over there. Um. Get out of this check business. And try and hold C five. Or maybe not. I'll just sack this knight, I think. Uh, I'd be done with this pawn as an issue. Maybe knight f5 to d4. Fg. Knight e3. Oh, he could take that. Um, hang on, let me take that. Okay, that's a bit crazy that opening, but. I thought I had some compensation in terms of the for the exchange set because that, that initial motive of blocking in the bishop. So a quick look at that. Equal. Equal. Oh, white's much better according to this. And it's changing its tune a little bit. It might be equal. I don't know. Black slightly better. I don't know. It's changing its tune. Black is much better. No idea. The engine has no idea. Needs to, okay, whatever. Okay, so killer cats. <clears throat> Let's play this Jabava system again against killer cat. So knight c3, if you want a novelty system rather than traditional tried and tested c4. So it's a sort of version of the London system of a knight on c3 instead of a pawn on c3. There sometimes is the ridiculous idea of knight b5. 
but now it's a kind of Spanish on the other side of the board Italian on the other side of the board uh, with this F3 idea mm, maybe knight e2 this is actually kind of scary this immediate bishop d6 okay Can I can I play this here? Still get a space advantage. This has got this bishop, which I think is is uh, in in some respects blocking in the the c8 bishop. There might be a little issue there. Might be okay. Knight f4 g5 looks as though it's a space gain. Which is interesting to have. Any b4 knight a4 looks good for the c5 square. Uh, e5 might be an idea, but maybe d5 is weakened. Okay, I'll go with this space gain. This diagonal is sometimes interesting for this bishop. Uh, there's also sometimes an interest in playing for g6. Okay, so here. Probably if I take, otherwise these pawns are looking extremely dangerous. Okay, it looks ridiculous to extend this bishop, but I'm hoping for upsides there. I mean, I will take. Okay, I'm opening up that bishop potentially, but otherwise c4 and it looks as though uh, it's dangerous. I'm gonna stop b4. Bishop h3. I'm hoping to get a reasonable position with bishop h3. Is is Bishop H three actually? Um, uh, um, mostly pointless. Yes, yeah, so my play looks mostly pointless so far. Bishops. What was the point of the bishop on H three? No point. I need some grip on the dark squares, I think. Even B4 might be a start of some sort of dark square grip. B4, knight, D7. Oh, there's G6 here. Hang on. There is a point now of the bishop on H3. So B4. Trying to weaken E6. Maybe. Uh, okay, I'll take that. Um, oh, there's knight d3 to c5. There's knight b5, king a2, though, in the meantime. Maybe bishop f1 to stop knight b5. This doesn't seem very inspiring. Queen d5, knight b5, queen b2. <laughs> Uh, e5 coming up after that, knight e6, there's also e5 immediately there. Okay, do I play bishop f1 then? Yeah, bishop f1. This knight b5 seems dangerous. Queen, d okay, okay, hang on a sec. c4, is that playable for c5? C four. All right. Um, yes, I know knight b five is dangerous. King a two though. After king a two or king b two. Okay, can knight b two. Try and win a four. If bishop c six, bishop a six. All right, can I just do this for a moment? Just trying to uh, get a grip on the position. The 
pawn structure more static now. Knight a4 or c4. C4 is a plausible move, isn't it? DC, Queen, D6, it seems to be a plausible move. To be able to play C5, which would shield me on the C file, I would hope. Oh, okay, I'm losing some pawns over there. That's a shame. Um, as bishop c4. Maybe, maybe there's knight a4 to b6. Knight h4, queen d3 protects f3 hits a6. I would have a plan, I think, then. I'm trying to play for b5 with rook e2 to b2 to b5. That would be a plan. Can I not just try and win this guy? Oh, there's knight f4. Okay. Oh, crikey. <clears throat> knight b6 for bishop d5. Okay. I'll try this. No, it's contesting d5 and d3 with knight f4. But nevertheless, um, maybe I'll play this anyway, rookie three. I can see A8 as a sort of common square to aim for because of this aggressive piece. Um, looking for A8. So say on the diagonal if there was a, a move like to support queen a8. Uh, for the moment though, uh, back to reality, rook e4 is it's a long way off exploiting a8 right now. There is, I mean, the past pawn potential as well is interesting. Oh, there's rook d4 here. It just wins a piece, doesn't it? All right. Check here. All right, yeah. Uh, thanks, Killer Cat. Okay. All right, yeah. I hope uh, yeah, you got something out of this session. Yeah, thanks for the games. Um, all right, thanks. Uh, one fun ten boring. Um, if you want to vote, otherwise, uh, I'll see you next week. Yeah, have a good rest of Sunday, and uh, see you next week. Thanks very much.